I want to show you something that you probably either have never seen or if you have seen it, the overwhelming likelihood is that you do not know what it was that you were looking at. It doesn't stand out. It just looks normal like it's part of the picture. What it is, is my former Uber driver, my former Uber vehicle. Not mine. I'm saying this kind of tongue in cheek, but this bus right here. I was taking my daughter out uh, to the airport early in the morning. She had to be there at about 4, 4.30 uh, to catch her early flight. And coming back home about 4 o'clock, 4.30, uh, I passed by this bus or this bus passed by passes by me. I get excited because what this bus is, is not an actual transport for customers, for people who want to take a, a ride from, let's say, from Texas to Oklahoma or something, something like that. No, this is a prison bus. Inside that bus is uh, guards, about three or four with shotguns, uh, cages, and inmates with shackles. These are inmates going to their first destination to serve out their prison sentence, or they might be uh, in the midst of being transferred from one prison to the next, either going down a custody level, possibly going up a custody level. This particular bus is actually on its way to a prison that I actually went to. I happen to know the route because I've, I've gone through it many times before. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when I saw this, it got me excited. Why would this have gotten me excited? Well, because it reminds me of what I went through, how God sustained me, how God brought me through and where God has me now. This reminds me of my thorn in the flesh. Well, what do you mean thorn in the flesh, Corey? Well, remember Paul makes a statement in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul says, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations for this reason to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. What does that have to do with you, Corey? Well, what I did, I did to myself. Why did I do it to myself? How did it happen? Well, because it was me being prideful, me looking out for me, looking for my best interest. And so I kind of, what I do is I look at this passage and I, I put me in it. I know it's kind of dangerous at times, but this is a good way to put myself into the, into the scriptures to make it relate to me because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation that is the gospel, the goodness of the Lord, how he has been in my life and yours uh, for this reason to keep Corey from exalting himself any further uh, anymore to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh. That big, beautiful prison bus, uh, they keep in tip top running shape to make sure to make sure you get to where you need to get to on time with all your new fellow roommates, your new your new colleagues. I was given that and a messenger of Satan also to go with that. A nice, a nice, comfortable, damp, cold, dusty rusty, run-down prison, big old cylinder, cinder block with windows and barbed wire and men with guns to make sure that your stay is there comfortable. By the way, they, they don't have room service, but they do provide all your meals for you. So five-star accommodations as they go in terms of being locked up. And so I was giving that. Now, upon release, what was there? What was given to me? A messenger of Satan to torment me. You know, someone that's always there to remind me where I've come from. Like the song says, there's always something there, or in this case, someone there to remind me. There's always someone that's going to remind me of where I've come from, what I've done, my past. Amen and amen. What does that do? It keeps me, it's a good thing, it keeps me from even wanting to think about exalting myself for me even wanting to think about making it about me. It keeps me focused on him because I know what happened when I thought too much about myself. I ended up there on that big, beautiful brown and orange and white uh, <laughs> 50 foot Uber. That's what it reminds me of. And when someone wants to tell me about my past, typically 20 years ago, 25 years ago, Amen. Now, if they want to live there, that's fine. But I think I look at that, though, as a uh, as a reason to shout, because when you look at my past and what I've been through, the prison, the homelessness and so forth, all the, the horrible things that I've done to other people and now to be in this position, what it does show, not the, the past that, I've, that I had, but the person that brought me out, the deliverer. And so when someone wants to remind me that just that that's fine by me, that is fine by me. If someone wants to remind you of your sin, let them have it. As a matter of fact, truth be told, you deserve more. And so if you want to tell me, remind me, amen. And guess what I won't do? I won't do that again. And so thank you for reminding me where as I may have gotten beside myself. And here's a word to the warning, a, a, a word to the wise. Uh, Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians 
in chapter 10, 12, he says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands, take heed that it does not fall. That's me. That was me. And so that might be you. If you think you stand, take heed. Now, you might not have an Uber like I get. You might get something else. You might get a brand new bed, a brand new bed at a nice place where they've got doctors there to take care of you or a bed where there are no doctors. Matter of fact, there are no lights. They just cover you up. You are safe, secured and sealed up um, in a nice little vault underground. That might be what you might have. And so take heed lest you fall thinking that you've got this, thinking that you're going to be OK. If you think that you are the man or you're the woman, you might. Matter of fact, not might. You will fall. But if you recognize how weak you are, if you recognize how fallen you are, how frail you are, how prone to mistakes you are, uh, what will you do? You will lean on the one who is strong. When I'm weak, that's what I know that I'm strong because it's not me that's strong. It's the one who I'm leaning on whose hands I recognize that I'm in. And so I don't have a problem with someone. I really don't. There's a tendency, there's a there's a knee-jerk response to want to shoot back at someone who shoots at you to remind you of your, of your past. And so I just remind them of my past also and how God brought me out. I'm still here. And so if someone wants to remind you of your past, amen, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me from that. Thank you, God, for making me better. Thank you, Father, because you literally paid the price. You spilled blood to pay for the mess that I made. Amen.